Elon's talking about power generation. Yeah. I mean, he's He had this post about adding a terawatt of generation capacity and what's the most efficient way to do this. I'm trying to figure out if he's doing this as like, is this just like a thought exercise of if you did need to add a terawatt of power generation, what would be the best way to do it? Or if he has some pretty massive ambitions. So total US generating capacity is about 1.3 terawatts. So talking about effectively like almost a doubling of the entire US capacity. He did mention in a separate tweet that or post that you could basically do this with 10 starships, which is like kind of nutty, but also I would, I, I want to point out like, that's not really practical in any way, shape or form. So I think what he's doing is saying, okay, what's the total thrust that's going out of the bottom of the starships and you can convert that there's a power associated with that. And then you can convert that power in Newtons to uh, megawatt hours or terawatt hours, uh -huh. or I guess in this case, because he's talking about terawatts, it would just be terawatts. Like what's the static yeah. level. So like 10 starships, I guess to, to make it exactly equal. You could have 13 starships essentially power the entire United States is what he's saying. I want to point out like that is not true because you have to take that power and then convert that to electricity. And they're like, mm -hmm. that would be a whole other set of issues and <laughs> very difficult things to figure out. Then on top of that, you've got like the entire fuel flow. So you think of how quickly that starship burns through the massive amount of like liquid oxygen and CH4 that or is it CH4? I forget. What is the propellant? That's methane. That it's, is CH4, I think, Especially right? the super heavy. When it's all together on the super heavy, yeah. Yeah. So sure, you could maybe do that, but that thing runs out of fuel. And that's a massive vehicle that runs out of fuel mm -hmm. in about five minutes. So this is this, I think he's giving you an idea of how powerful Starship is. Not necessarily that's a practical application that we could consider mm -hmm. <laughs> rolling out at scale. The fuel flows you'd need, the cooling you'd need. And then you still haven't solved the problem of how do you actually convert that into electricity with that being heat, you would essentially have to like torch that and in, in, into some pipes to make a boiler, to make, turn a steam turbine, to make electricity. So I don't mm -hmm. think that's actually what he's thinking, but I do think he's giving serious consideration to like from first principles, we've got all these issues that everyone's very yeah. well aware of the transmission constraints, the interconnect queue and how long that takes actual transformers and like the huge bottleneck around those. So if you want to move fast and build a bunch of new data centers and frankly, just increase power capacity, because aside from data centers and AI and that whole trend, like increasing power generation is correlated very directly with like increases in prosperity. Um, mm -hmm. Cause if you've got cheap electricity, you can do a lot of things more, more cheaply and that cause a better quality of life than if you can. I'll get off my ramp cause I'm apparently not able to speak anymore, but curious what your thoughts were on, on that post from Elon. Yeah, I think Elon might be serious, Matt. Serious about building a terawatt or serious yeah. about doing it with starships? <laughs> yeah, Colossus, despite its huge size, is less than a gigawatt. So I think he's really excited about what, like the simulation, the real world for Optimus. And I don't know if you need all the compute in one thing to like quickly train to add that piece to the model. So then you can add another sim to real thing to the model. I'm not sure if it has to be sequential, but I also think Elon's excited about the progress that XAI is making with their intelligence. He's really excited about like the AI being able to take a first principles approach like to logic and things like that, that it's going to excel in an IQ test. Whereas right now the AIs, I think at best are like 124 on an IQ test or something like that. So I think Elon's really bold up and he's wanting to get more compute. So and he's the a last point I want to make here is like every time he's gotten more compute, he has delivered. Yeah. Every well, time. That was what I was going to ask you actually. So I, th I think I remember seeing somewhere that that Colossus data center was going from a hundred thousand GPUs to 200,000. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Do you recall seeing that also? Yeah. And they may have done that already, but they want to take it to a million, but how do they, I don't, I, how are they getting the power for this right now? Is it just diesel gen sets that they're doing? Like, I, I know they, they put a bunch of mega packs in at first, but you can't, 
you also need the power generation. You can't just have mega packs. So where are they getting all this power generation? Because like, we've been following a couple of voices in the space, basically mm -hmm. saying that like GE Vernova, which makes a lot of these gas turbines is basically mm -hmm. sold out until 2030. Now that's a little anecdotal. I'm not sure that's exactly true or not, but like at bare minimum, there's a lot of demand for all this power generation equipment. And so it's just a lot of gas generators to hook up and those are very inefficient. So first of all, like huge amount of emissions, because yeah. you're not doing it, you're not like using the natural gas as efficiently as you otherwise could. But also I think the bigger piece is just the economics of it are not that great when you've got a, oh, okay, there it is. Oh, that was in October. Yeah. Maybe they're past the 200,000 mark now. And there's um, an SE Robinson tweet where he posts about the million, the plans for a million cluster at Colossus. Yeah. So the, the thing with these diesel gen sets is they might have a very low capital cost compared to building something else, but the fuel efficiency is terrible. And that has a, a very real impact. So like the best gas turbines in the world that are something like what's called combined cycle gas turbines, where you actually, you spin a very efficient gas turbine, and then you take the waste heat and you spin a, a steam generator with that waste heat. Those have a heat rate that, of 6,000 BTUs per kilowatt hour or something. I forget the exact conversion. But what that means is basically you take your price of natural gas, let's say that's $3, and you multiply that by the six on the heat rate. And that gives you like an electricity cost input of about $18 per megawatt hour. If you have a diesel gen set in like, the, let's say the heat rates, I don't know, 15 or something like that, you're going to have $45 just on the fuel cost alone, plus all the other like inputs and plus the emissions. And so there's a very real cost to going fast, but not doing it efficiently. And I, they, I just think that there needs to be a better solution than what these companies are doing right now to bridge the short-term gap. Yeah. I'm not sure what the agreement is, but I know they're getting some power from the Tennessee Valley authority, but there's some kind of fallback where if TVA needs the power then Colossus will cede the power to the TVA. So they're getting a lot of it from like the dam in the TVA region, the hydroelectric. But yeah, they brought in a lot of generators there as well. I think that's a really important point though, that if the if TVA can't serve them, then like they need to reduce load. Yeah, I think the that's a really big piece of the equation that I think the data centers are going to have to start accepting. Because like they are becoming such a big part of the overall grid and frankly, they're accelerating faster in terms of new demand than these other mm -hmm. sectors. So if you want guaranteed like 99.99% uptime from your electricity supply, that's going to be very expensive relative to being a little bit more flexible and saying, okay, I'm willing to take some downtime when the grid is in real stress and TVA or whoever the grid operator is just says, we've got more demand than we have like backup supply. So I need you data center to go down for these four hours tomorrow in order to help us alleviate this issue. If the data centers can be a little bit more flexible and provide that it's called capacity essentially, or demand response back to the grid, that's highly valuable. And I think that's going to create a lot lower like cost of serving the electricity to these data centers. But that said, that can be hard on your GPUs. So you need to have a system in place of how do you manage that? And maybe one way you can manage that is by having <laughs> just like a ton of mega packs to, to bridge that gap and help you kind of wind down slowly. But it's, there's no clear answer here to, to me. And it's something we've been spending a lot of time on. So I want to ask you a question here. T Nelly asked about Saudi Arabia doing a huge solar array, and maybe we could just plug in a bunch of wires and have them power the world. What do you think about that? Or citing the GPUs in the Saudi Arabian desert? So I think that actually goes really closely with this other comment that I was seeing. Solar is so screamingly the answer. China is still relocating supply chain here. Trump is perhaps inadvertently accelerating solar with tariffs. Like solar is the cheapest in terms of dollar per megawatt hour. But mm -hmm. what you actually need is like these data centers are base load, which means they are running at 95 to hundred percent capacity. Solar, it can meet their demand like this. So there's big chunks of the day when that's not available. So you right. either need batteries and if you need batteries, then you need a huge oh, amount wow. of batteries or you need longer duration batteries and still a huge amount of them, or like you need solar coupled with wind right. and, and some other stuff. The problem, I agree that solar just makes a lot of sense and solar is going to continue to do extremely well. 
But what I started doing a lot of the math of, okay, how many batteries would you need to basically turn solar into like base load? And it's like extremely expensive. Jigger Shaw, who used to run the DOE's loan program office, and he's been a leading voice in energy for a long time. He had this rant on this maybe a month ago on this podcast mm -hmm. I was listening to that was phenomenal. He was basically saying, okay, there's lots of different ways that you can solve this problem. Like you can do solar with a bunch of batteries. It turns out if you like appropriately size that, it works out to about $100 per megawatt hour to turn solar into base load. You can do the same thing, solar plus wind. Turns out you need some batteries for that. And when you put it all together, it winds up being about $100 per megawatt hour. You can do like utility interconnect. That's about $100 per megawatt hour, but it takes a little bit longer. Or you can do like geothermal. And like Fervo is a great company out there that's just starting to do some pricing right now. And like the commentary that Jigger was making is, turns out they're pricing that at about $100 per megawatt hour. So you basically, if you want firm power, you're going to have to pay about $100 per megawatt hour. And I just don't think there's any way around that. I think a little bit of a mindset shift I've been having recently is taking the levelized cost of energy, which is you take your solar panels and you project out how much energy, electricity you're going to generate. And then you project out all your costs and then you divide the total cost by the total generation and you get a levelized cost of energy that's $18 maybe. And you're like, oh, that's clearly going to win all day. And it will except that you need to get that power where it needs to be consumed. Um, and the cost of doing all that is, is like maybe another $80 <laughs> or you have to overbuild the solar in mm -hmm. like some combination of things. I think changing mindset from just looking at the cost of the generation to really looking at the total cost to deliver that power to the customer who needs it. That's the, that's what I'm trying to spend my attention on this topic right now. So I have a dumb question. Go for it. When we were talking about, and this was a number of years ago when casuals were mining Bitcoin or Ethereum. Mm -hmm. There's this whole social responsibility or environmental responsibility about that causing global warming. So I'm curious, let's say you have a natural gas turbine or something else with natural gas and that creates heat. And then you have this steam turbine that I'll, I'll use the wrong term, recaptures or utilizes, oh, yeah. Yeah. recaptures the heat. Okay. Are you still heating the earth? Is there still like waste heat that's exiting the whole thing? Are we, will we still be heating up the planet or? So I think the concern from those voices was more about the CO2 emissions and you have roughly the same amount of CO2 emissions. I guess the reason that a, what's called combined cycle, where you have that more efficient system, you're getting more electricity per unit of fuel. So your CO2 emissions per megawatt hour are a little bit lower with that type of plant. And then yet yeah, your waste heat just to the atmosphere is obviously lower because you're using that productively to heat up some water. Now the downside of that is, is then you've got some hot water that you need to condense and you need to discharge back into a, a body. So that needs to be monitored, but that's not too big of a deal in most situations. So generally speaking, the CO2 emissions are still there, but obviously the more efficient you can be, the better. So crazy thought, and this comes from the Eric, the co-founder of Google. What's his last name? I'm spacing, but he was like the CEO that came in. He talks about bringing data centers into space. So like you, if you have waste heat, then it's, it happens in space and you can get the cooling. Eric Schmidt. There we go. Yeah. That's also an interesting thought. Maybe you need a bunch of starships to get the data centers in the space and then you can get your cooling that way. Yeah, that sounds crazy, but if you get the cost of launch down low enough, that could actually be pretty compelling. You might have some issues with how do you, what do you do with waste heat from your compute? So that would need to be figured out. I'm sure initially that would be a lot more expensive, but in the long run, I could see something like that, which sounds crazy actually working out. Yeah. I was actually listening to another energy podcast a while ago and they were talking about space-based solar, which mm -hmm. sounds crazy, but like the idea is. If you have yeah, it how does that orbit? not heat up our planet? Like you're transmitting energy back to Earth. I guess that's what the sun does all the time. But yeah, you're yeah, so a directed. I don't know microwave or whatever. Yeah, you can actually. I believe it was with microwaves that you, they they've demonstrated you could actually send the power back <laughs> via microwaves to these towers that could then like collect it and take it where it needs to go. Sounds totally crazy, and I think when you scale up, you run into some real problems with frying some stuff. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm skeptical that this actually makes sense, but I, I think following some of these rather out there ideas 
is, is pretty interesting because I think in the long run, we need a lot more compute. We need a lot more electricity generation. That seems pretty clear to me. So I'm all for people trying some rather crazy things and most of it probably won't work, but some of it eventually will. I think you and I have thrown a little bit of shade at SMRs recently yeah. too, because they're not scalable. There's no, or I shouldn't say they're not scalable, but there's no working prototypes right now. We're years yeah. away. We've still got regulatory red tape. And so I think this is not a, a real solution in say the next five years, but in 10, 15, 20 years, I think that's great. And I'm glad people are researching it. It's not something I would want to touch with a 10 foot pole as an investor right now.